3.1.1 says uh, calculate uh, the gradient of BE. Uh, for the sake of time, I won't read the question again, uh, but I highly advise you to read the question before you attempt any question. So the gradient uh, of BE will determine it by uh, y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Uh, for B, uh, the points is k and k, and then for E, uh, the points is uh, 12 and 0. So because B is made up of k and k, uh, we cannot determine the gradient of B E using B because there's unknowns. But then instead of using B, we can use C instead because C lies on the same line as B and E. So the gradient of that line is the same everywhere, right? So we're not going to use um, B, but we're going to use C and E. Um, now from this point, we have to decide which uh, coordinate we take in as the second coordinate and which one we take in as the first. So let's just take E as the second coordinate. So this will be x2, uh, y2, and then this will be x1, uh, y1. So the gradient will just be equals to um, 0 minus minus 2 divided by 12 minus 4 uh, which is going to give us 2 divided by 8 which is 1 divided by 4 if you do it the other way around and you start with c uh, you still get you still get 1 over 4 and then 3.1.2 says calculate the gradient of a b um We know that uh, A is made out of a minus 2 and 10, and then B is made out of K and K. So we cannot use this formula that says Y2 minus Y1 divided by X2 minus X1, because uh, not only is B uh, consisting of unknown values, but there's no other point uh, that is uh, that is on a b so we cannot do what we did in 3.1.1 so what we can do here we can say that tan theta equals to the gradient theta being the angle of inclination this angle here you can always relate it to the gradient uh, by this formula tan theta equals to the gradient of um, a b so if we go ahead and do that, we'll get tan of 81.87 equals to the gradient of AB. If you put that in your calculator, you get tan 81.87 is 7. So this is 7 is the gradient of AB, which makes sense because AB is very steep, right? Um, let's move ahead. We have 3.2. So 3.2 says determine the equation of BE in the form y equals to mx plus c. We know that the gradient of uh, BE, uh, which we have calculated above, is 1 divided by 4. So now we have y equals to 1 divided by 4x plus c. Uh, from here, we're going to substitute either C or E in this equation to determine C. Uh, so let's uh, substitute uh, E. So E is made out of uh, 12 and 0, right? So we're going to get 0 equals to 1 over 4 uh, multiplied by 12 plus C. So this is um, C equals to... Uh, minus 1 over 4 multiplied by 12, which is equals to minus 3. So we have y equals to 1 over 4x minus 3. I hope that is clear. Uh, you can substitute c instead, and you still get the same thing, right? 
yeah let's move ahead so now we have 3.3 uh, 3.3.1 says calculate the coordinates of b where k is less than zero so we know that the equation of b is y equals to 1 over 4 x minus 3 and then b is made out of k and k because b is made out of k and k the x and the y coordinates are the same if we substitute it into our equation uh this equation here we're gonna have one variable and we're gonna be able to solve it but then if that was not the case and maybe it was made out of k and q we'd have to find the equation of line a b and then we equate the equation of line a b and b e to find the x coordinate of b and then after that we can find y but then just because b is made out of k and k we don't have to do that we can just substitute it into into this equation but then this is a very special problem because very rarely will you have a situation where you can just substitute and then you find x and y simultaneously so let's go ahead and do that we're gonna get k we're gonna get k equals to 1 over 4 multiplied by k minus 3 so we're gonna get k minus 1 over 4 k equals to minus 3 so we're gonna get um 3 divided by 4 k equals to uh minus 3 so we're gonna get 3 k equals to minus uh 12 so k equals to minus 4 so b is minus 4 and minus 4 like the question is suggested k is less than zero and that's exactly what we found 3.3.2 says calculate the size of a we know that um angle angle a uh, g uh, a g um e is equals to uh a f e uh, plus angle a because uh an exterior angle of a triangle is equals to the sum of two opposite interior so what we can do we can calculate uh, this angle right after we calculate this angle we know what this angle is so the only thing we'll be left with is a which is what you're interested in so how do we calculate age we calculate age uh, using tan theta equals to m so we'll have a uh, theta equals to uh, tan arc of uh, y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 right um we're using a and c so if we take c as the second point we're gonna get tan arc uh c is the second point so y2 is minus 2 minus uh, y1 is 10 divided by 4 minus minus 2 so if i put that in the calculator i get uh minus 2 minus 10 divided by 4 plus 2 and then that gives you minus 63.4349 if you get a negative angle you always have to add 180 and then if i add 180 um, let me just i get uh one one six point five six five one degrees so now i know that one one six point five six five one degrees is equals to 
uh, AFE, which is 81.87 uh, plus, plus A, right? So A is equals to 116.5651 minus 8187 and this will give me so i'm taking all of these and then so i have 116.5651 minus 81.87 uh, that's giving me 34.6951 degrees so that's the uh coldly that's the that's the size of angle a so 3.3.3 uh says coordinates of point of the point of inter intersection of the diagonals of parallelogram a c e s where s is in the first quadrant so let's assume that uh, s is somewhere here so this is the parallelogram and then uh, these are our uh, diagonals right and then the question goes on to say oh so we're supposed to determine uh, the point of intersection this point here this point here is the midpoint between s and c and the midpoint between e and a so what this question is basically asking us to do is to find the midpoint of uh, a and e so we're gonna have um let's call the midpoint m right so what we're gonna have uh, we're gonna have x2 plus x1 divided by 2 y2 plus y1 divided by 2 that's how you determine um the the midpoint and then x2 we can take a as the second point or we can take e as the second point but then let's just take e as the second point so we're gonna have 12 plus minus 2 divided by 2 and then for y we have 0 uh, plus 10 divided by 2 and then this gives us uh, 5 and 5 so the point of intersection of the diagonals of the parallelogram ACES is 5 and 5, right? Um, 3.4, 3.4.1 says uh, another point T, uh, which is made out of P and P, uh, where P is greater than 0, is plotted such that... Uh, E T equals to B E equals to four uh, square root of seventeen, and then the first question says calculate the coordinates of T. These kind of questions seem tricky, but what you have to do, like I always advise, is to stick to the basics. Like start with the information you know and try move towards uh, finding out what you don't know so we are told that et is equals to be is equals to 4 square root of 17 and then um we can so because we want to determine uh we, we want to determine t and then t is made out of uh two identical coordinates we can sort of use the distance formula to figure it out because we know what um the length of the line is supposed to be so let's say um so let's say uh, okay t uh, it's made out of p and p and let's say this is uh x one and then this is y one and then uh, let's take uh, the coordinates of e and say this is uh, this is 12 and then this is there right and then this is x2 and then this is uh, y y2 so if we use the distance formula we're gonna get um, the square root of um, y2 uh, y2 is 0 minus 
y1 which is p right squared uh, plus uh, x2 x2 is 12 minus x1 uh, which is p again and then squared and then this is equals to um, 4 square root of 17 this is the distance formula this is the distance formula in place of x we substituted p in place of y we substituted p again because t is made out of uh, p and p for x and y right so let's get rid of the square root so we're squaring both sides uh, we're gonna get um, 0 minus actually let's solve that too so we're just gonna get uh, minus p squared uh, plus 12 minus p squared equals to uh, 4 multiplied by square root of 17 everything squared which is 272 so minus p squared will be p squared and then if we solve that we get uh, 12 multiplied by 12 is 144 and then 12 multiplied by minus p is minus 12 p multiplied by 2 is minus 24 p and then minus p multiplied by minus p that's plus p squared which is close to 272 if we uh, take 272 to the left hand side we get 2 p squared plus 144 um, no, uh, minus 144 is going to be subtracted by 272. So let me write a minus 24p first. So we're going to have minus 24p and then 144 minus 272, uh, which will give us minus 128 uh, equals to 0. Uh, we can take 2 as a common factor. We're going to get p squared minus 12p minus 64 equals to 0 and then we can uh we can we can factorize this which two numbers do you multiply and they give you 64 and then you add them and they give you minus 12 and uh, that is minus 16 and 4 so we're gonna have p uh, minus 16 multiplied by p uh plus 4 equals to 0 so p equals to 16 or p equals to minus 4 so our equation said that p is greater than 0 right so this is the correct value of p p cannot be cannot be uh, equals to minus 4 because our equation uh, was explained in saying that p is equals to uh, is greater than 0 so 3. Point 4.2 uh, determine the equation of the circle uh, and then um, circle with center E E is made out of 12 and 0 uh, passing through B and T so it's passing through uh, B and T okay so we have X minus A squared plus Y minus B squared equals to r squared so x minus in place of a uh, we're going to put uh, the x coordinate of the what do we call this the x coordinate of uh, the point at the center uh, which is e so we're gonna have minus 12 squared uh, plus y um, b is 0 the y coordinate of the center so just have y squared equals to and then what's what is r squared what is r squared it is said that e is the center and then on the circumference we have b and t so from the question we were solving above we know that et is equals to eb is equals to uh, 4 uh, multiplied by uh, the square root of 17 so 4 multiplied by the square root of 17 squared will determine it above and it's 
272. So that's how um, we'd solve this one. And then B, B says uh, tangent to the circle at point uh, B. So the center, we have E. And then at the circumference somewhere, uh, we have B, uh, which is K, K. And then we're supposed to find the equation of this tangent here. So um, what's the gradient of EB? If we calculate the gradient of EB, then we can, um, we can, we can, we can use uh, that formula that says, uh, the product of the gradients of, uh, a tangent and the line is equals to minus one. Okay. So we determined the gradient of, uh, of EB above using EC and we see that, uh, let me check. Um, we see that the gradient is, is one over four. So the gradient of EB multiplied by the gradient of the tangent is equals to minus one. This is the formula I was talking about. So we know that this is one divided by four uh, multiplied by the m of the tangent, right? Which is equals to uh, minus one. So m of tangent equals to minus four. So we have y equals to mx plus c and then y equals to minus 4x plus c um and then our uh, point b point b we've determined the case for point b uh let me check 3.3.1 uh minus 4 and minus 4. so we have minus 4 and minus 4 of which if we substitute them in the equation we'll get minus 4 equals to minus 4 multiplied by minus 4 plus z a whole lot of minus 4 so uh plus c yeah. so we're gonna get minus 4 equals to minus 4 by minus 4 16 plus c so c equals to minus 20 so y equals to minus 4x minus 20 if you take a look on the left hand side, um, we have a question there on analytical geometry. Uh, the first question requires us to calculate the gradient of BC. Uh, gradient is denoted as M or BC. Uh, so let's start by going through the definition first. Gradient by definition, it is equals to the change in Y divided by the change in x so what is change change is um the difference between the final and the initial so that gives us y2 uh, minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 um so let's look at uh uh, our line BC, yes, BC here. Let me just, it starts here. Uh, look at the left hand side and then it starts here. So we have point B and C. Uh, we're going to choose which point we're regarding as one and which point is regard, we're regarding as two. Uh, we can start with B, we can start with C. We're still going to end up in the same place. So let's just, uh, take B as our point two. So that will mean we have B, uh, six, and then the Y, uh, coordinate is five. And then this will be our X two. And then this will be our Y two. Uh, for C, uh, we have the X coordinate is zero. The Y coordinate is minus three. Uh, this will be our X one. This will be our Y one. If we substitute this into the equation we have, we're going to get, uh, the gradient of bc is equals to y2 is 5 uh here it is here um it's 5 uh y1 it's minus 3 so we're going to have a minus um minus 3 divided by x2 is 6 here it is here 
uh, x1 is 0, so we're going to get 6 minus 0. 5 minus minus 3, that's going to give you 8. Uh, divided by 6 minus 0, that's just going to give you 6. Um, we can divide by 2 on the numerator and the denominator, and that will lead to 4 divided by 3. So that is how we determine the gradient if we are given uh, a line and we have two points on the line. Uh, like I was saying, you can do it vice versa. You can choose uh, point C to be your second point. So that's where you'll get X, X2 and Y2 and we still get the same answer. Uh, just to prove that instead of 5 minus minus 3, you're going to get minus 3 minus 5 divided by 0 minus 6. This is minus 8 divided by minus 6, which is just going to be 4 divided by 3. So whichever point you start, you you decide to start with, it doesn't really make much of a difference. You're still going to get the same thing. Uh, let's move forward. Uh, we have equation 3.2 that is saying, determine the equation of AD. Um, so uh, this is AD. Uh, we have d year and then we have a year uh, so if you look at the structure we have um line a d uh, is parallel to line uh, b c that is the gradient of a b um, equals to the gradient of um, a d i meant it's equals to the gradient of b c uh, we've already determined the gradient of uh, BC. We see that it's cos 2 of 4 divided by 3. Uh, the equation, the question says we must deter determine the equation of AD. Uh, AD is a straight line. Uh, the general formula for a straight line is given at y equals to mx plus c. Uh, we have our m, so let's go ahead and substitute it. Uh, this will be uh, 4 divided by 3 x plus c and then now we have three unknown variables we have y we have x we have c um so what we're going to do we are going to pick any point on line ad if we pick a point we have an x and a y so what we'll be left with is the c and then after we determine our c we have the equation of uh, the line AD. The only point we have on line AD is A. So we're going to substitute A in this equation in attempt to find C. So um, A is given as minus 2 uh, Q there on the Y. If we substitute it, we get a 2 equals to 4 divided by 3. X, we say this minus uh, 2 uh, as given there and then uh, to solve this uh, we're gonna have 2 and then minus 4 uh, 4 divided by 3 multiplied by minus 2 that is gonna give us minus 8 um, divided by 3 uh, plus C so we're gonna take minus 8 divided by 3 to the left hand side and then uh, we find the value of C so that will be 2 plus 8 divided by 3 uh, equals to c and now i'm going to give 2 a uh, denominator of 3 so that i can just add the numerators uh, so 2 uh, to write it in a way that you get a denominator of 3 uh, you write it as 6 divided by 3 uh, plus 8 divided by 3 uh, this is equals to this uh, equals to c we take common denominator we add the exponent we add the numerator i'm sorry so we're gonna have six plus eight equals to c uh this is 14 divided by three equals to c so we have the value of c uh we have the value of m so our equation we say is given as y equals to m x plus c so this is just going to be y equals to m, I think it was 4 divided by 3, yes that's right. So this is going to be 4 divided by 3, x plus 14 divided by 
3. Uh, so that's uh, the equation we have for AD. You can actually prove if this is true uh, by substituting uh, the x value of the point A and seeing if you get uh, the y value. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to have y equals to. Uh, this is the answer right here. Now we just trying to prove if the answer we got is right. Uh, so it's going to be y equals to 4 divided by 3. Um, x is minus 2. Uh, so that's going to be minus 2 plus 14 divided by 3. So this is going to give us minus 8 divided by 3 plus 14 divided by 3. We take 3 as a common a denominator minus 8 uh, plus 14. And this is going to give us 6 divided by 3, which is cos 2. So the equation works. Um, 3.2 um determine the equation oh that's what we just did the equation of ad um 3.3 uh determine the value of t uh t is uh, the x coordinate of point n um point n i think it lies on the equation ad at uh, the line ad so let me just look at the equation again and seeing that um uh, um they say that n is a point on ad yeah a is a point n is a point on ad uh if n is a point on ad then the gradient of a n is equal to the gradient of ad and equals to the gradient of n d is the same line so the gradient is the same everywhere and so we're gonna use the gradient to calculate the value of t uh, that is a gradient of a n uh, equals to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 uh, this is equals to let's choose um okay this is equals to let's write the gradient first this is equals to uh, 4 divided by 3 as the gradient uh, so let's take point a as the second point right so we're gonna have this as x2 and this as y2 uh, point n as the first point so this is x1 and then this is um, y1 is given as a zero right and then this is t so we're gonna have um, minus 2 minus t no actually that's wrong we're gonna have a uh, 2 minus 0 uh, y2 minus y1 right yeah there it is there it is and then divided by x2 x2 is minus 2 so we're gonna have minus 2 minus x1 which is t equals to 4 divided by 3 we're gonna cross multiply we're going to have 2 multiplied by 3 that's gonna give us 6 and then we have minus 8 uh, minus 4 t uh, take it to the other side we're gonna have uh, 14 yes uh, equals to minus 40 and then as a result if you solve for t we're gonna get t equals to um, 14 uh, divided by uh, minus 4 and uh, divide everything by 2 you get 7 divided by um, minus 2 so that's the value of t to prove if this value of t is the correct one, you take it and you substitute it here and see if you get 4 divided by 3. Uh, you can pause the video and you know just check if you're getting the same thing and then you can continue watching. I'm assuming you did that, so let's move ahead. We have um, 3.5. For it says calculate the length of a n. So we're going to start with the definition again. So if we have a line um, a b, then what is the length of that line? So the length of a b uh, would be y two minus y one squared plus x two uh, minus x one squared. Right. Uh, so it's saying the length of a n. Um, we're going to choose uh, 
any point as the second point and the other point as the first point the order doesn't matter we're gonna end up with the same thing so let's choose a as the second point right uh, so that will imply that a minus 2 2 this is x2 this is y2 and then we have n which is made up of uh, 7 divided by minus 2 like we calculated and then you have here we have 0 this is y1 this is x1 so if we substitute it into the equation we're going to have a uh, absolute of a b equals to um, y2 that is 2 minus y1 which is uh, 0 all squared uh, plus x2 that's minus 2 uh, minus minus 7 over 2 so that's going to give us plus 7 divided by 2 squared uh, this is equals to uh, let me not you know do all that arithmetic let me just plug it into the calculator and uh, see what we have um, let's see I think we're gonna get uh, square root of 25 divided by 4 uh, if we further simplify that that's 5 uh, divided by 2 right so that will be the length of a n uh, let's move forward uh, 3.5 if DC is defined as y equals to let me write that down y equals to 3 divided by 8 x minus 3 determine the coordinates of d uh, so here's d here uh, uh, dc is this line uh, it has uh, this equation uh, which we are given uh, the question says let's find uh, the coordinate of d line a d and dc at uh, the touch uh, once right so if we equate uh, the equation of AD and that of DC, we're gonna find where they touch on on X, right? The coordinate of the point at which they touch. So if we uh, go ahead and do that, we're gonna have uh, the equation of AD, we uh, determined it above. I uh, think, um, let me think it was something like, um, 4 divided by 3 uh, x uh, plus uh, the, the the value of c that we got was 14 divided by 3 and uh, this is going to give you um, 3 divided by 8 x uh, minus 3 um, let's take uh, the axis to one side and uh, the numbers to one side right um, so because 4 divided by 3x is greater than uh, 3 divided by 8x I'm gonna take 3 divided by 8x to the left hand side so that I don't deal with a negative value so I'm gonna get 4 divided by 3x uh, minus 3 uh, divided by 8x equals to minus 3 minus 14 divided by 3 uh, just for the sake of time I'm just gonna uh, put that in the calculator uh, so that I don't uh, waste time during doing the math. Um, 4 divided by 3 minus 3 divided by 8. Uh, that is giving me uh, 23 divided by 24x equals to, and then I have minus 3, minus 14 divided by 3. Uh, that is giving me minus 23 divided by 3. Uh, so I'm going to divide both sides by 23 divided by uh, 24 to see what we get. So that will be 23 divided by 24. Uh, that gives me uh, x of minus 8. So we found the x coordinate. Now what we're supposed to do is find the y coordinate. Uh, you can substitute x equals to minus 8 to the equation of AD or the equation of DC and then we are supposed to get the same thing because they are equal at that point so let's just substi I substitute it in the equation of uh, DC we're gonna get y equals to 3 divided by 8x minus 3 equals to 3 divided by 8 our x we determined it to be minus 8 minus 3 uh, minus 
So what's gonna happen here is that uh, this eight and this eight are gonna cancel. So I'm gonna be left with minus three and uh, minus three, right? Which is gonna be uh, so sorry for that. Uh, which is just gonna be minus six. So d is given as uh, minus eight. That's the y minus six. Uh, that's the x. I'm sorry, minus six. Uh, that's the y, and voila, there we have it. Um, let's move ahead. Three point six. Um, prove that a b c d is a parallelogram. Um, so what is a parallelogram? You cannot solve this kind of questions if you don't know uh, the definition of uh, what we are required to find. So for a parallelogram, uh, the two opposite sides need to be parallel to each other. Um, if you look at the left hand side, uh, it is given that A D is already parallel to BC. So what this question is actually asking us to do is to determine if A, B uh, is parallel to DC. And then what follows is when are two lines parallel? If the gradient of A, um, now <laughs> I've covered that, if the gradient of A, B uh, is equal to the gradient of DC, then they are they're parallel. Uh, let's go ahead and calculate the gradient of um, AD. Uh, we're choosing A as the second point. So we're going to get... Um, okay, let me just write it down for formality. S squared minus X1 equals to Y squared minus Y1 divided by X squared minus X1. So uh, we choose it. Let, let's take B as the second point uh, so that we don't deal with a lot of negatives. We're going to have uh, 5 uh, minus 2 um, there, y1. And then we're going to have 6 uh, minus, minus 2 equals 2. Then we have uh, DC. Uh, let's take um, C as the second point. Uh, so y2 will be minus 3. Uh, y1 will be minus into minus 6 and then we get we have 0 uh, minus into minus 8 so 5 5 minus 2 is 3 and 6 minus minus 2 is 8 equals to minus 3 minus minus 6 <laughs> that's um 3 yeah and then divided by um divided by divided by eight uh, zero minus minus eight so because um the gradients of these two lines are equal uh, that proves that a b c d is a parallelogram 3.7 um because at 3.6 we proved that um a b c d is a parallelogram right uh, then where the point where the line ac uh, cuts uh d b is the midpoint of the line ac and the line uh, d b uh, that's just a property of the parallelogram right so we're going to determine uh, the coordinate of m uh, using that idea that is in the midpoint of um, the the midpoint of uh, DB and the midpoint of AC. Uh, so, what are we really saying? If we're saying that is the midpoint, we're saying that if we have um, some point K, which is between uh, L and p right uh, we're just making an example uh this case here in between is the midpoint then we're saying that x of k is equals to x of l plus um x of p divided by 2 and then we're saying that y of k is equals to y of l plus y of uh, P 
uh, divided by two. So that's you know what we essentially say in when you say that a point is the midpoint between two points. So if we do the same for m, we'll be saying that m uh, is given as uh, x of um, x of c uh, plus x of um, a divided by 2 uh, y of c plus y of a divided by 2. Uh, if we sub that in, we get x of c is 0, um, x of a is minus 2, so that's going to be minus 2 uh, divided by 2 y of c is 2, y of a is minus 3, everything divided by 2. Uh, this is going to give you minus 1, and then this is going to give you minus 1 divided by 2. So that's how we'd, uh, we would find the coordinates of m. Um, if you like the video, uh, please subscribe to the channel and leave a comment if you have any complaints. 3.1 says calculate the gradient of a b so here's a b here we have point a here and point b here and then the line goes on until point c but then we don't have coordinates for point a so we cannot use uh, m of a b is equals to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 we also don't have coordinates of c uh, but then we have the angle of inclination of line a b c right so since we have the angle of inclination we can use uh, tan theta is equals to the gradient of a b right we are allowed to do this from here we can then say that tan of 45 degrees is equals to the gradient of a b so the gradient of a b will be tan of 45 degrees is one so the gradient of a b is equals to one and that's how you do that question and then 3.2 says show that the value of k is minus six uh, k is the y coordinate of point a right and then since we have the gradient of a b we can use the gradient formula to find the coordinate of k so what we can say here for 3.2 we can say that uh, the gradient of a b is equals to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 now it's on us to decide which point we take as point two and which point we take as point one so let's take uh, b as point two and then a as point one you can do it the other way around it still works so the y coordinate of b is minus two so we're gonna have minus two minus the y coordinate of a which is k all divided by x2 x2 the x coordinate of a of b which is 8 minus the x coordinate of a which is 4 and then we know that m of a b it's 1 that is the gradient right so we have 1 is equals to minus 2 divided minus k divided by 8 minus 4 8 minus 4 that is 4 we cross multiply we get 4 is equals to minus 2 minus k take minus 2 to the other side you get 6 is equals to minus k divide both sides by minus 1 so minus 6 is equals to k and that is exactly what we are asked to show so now the coordinates of a we have 4 and minus 6 right k is minus 6 and then let's move to 3.2 3.2 says determine the equation of ea in the form y is equals to mx plus c so let's look for ea so here's ea here ea ea is said to be parallel to fb as we can see from the lines and so fine let's say 3.3 and then we know that y is equals to mx plus c so we need m and c right but we can find the gradient of ea right the gradient of ea will be equals to the gradient of fb since line ea is parallel to line fb and then we have the equation for line fb which is in the form y is equals to minus a half x plus two so now at this point we can say that the gradient of ea is equals to 
minus a half. Why are we saying so? That is because EA is parallel to line FB. Uh, so now we're only left with C and then we have point A. Don't forget that. So because we have point A, we can substitute it in our equation and then we can find C, right? So if we sub A, uh, which is made out of 4 and minus 6, we're going to get minus 6 is equals to the gradient, which is a half multiplied by x which is 4 plus c right so we have minus 6 is equals to uh, minus half of 4 that is minus 2 plus c so we take in uh, minus 2 to the other side we get minus 4 is equals to c so our equation becomes y is equals to uh, minus a half x minus 4 right uh, because we just figure out that uh, c is minus 4 and we have our equation for ea and then let's move to 3.4 3.4 and then 3.4.1 says let's find the size of theta right so we're looking for the size of theta so let's go back to our sketch again um here's theta here uh angle pba it's our theta right so we will need to find the size of that angle um what is theta equals to let's let's look at that theta is equals to will be equals to this angle here plus uh this angle here right uh, because an exterior angle of a triangle is equals to the sum of two opposite interior so now we can see that theta is equals to angle c p b plus angle p c b so we have p c b right and then why are we seeing that exterior angle of a triangle is equals to uh, the sum of two opposite interior right so now we can uh, go ahead and try find the size of cpb and the size of pcb and then we would have theta so let's look at cpb cpb so cpb is here let me change the color so cpb is here right so how can we find cpb we know that cpb plus this angle here right uh, will be equals to 180 because they're on straight line so if we find this angle that i'm circling then we're gonna be able to find cpb but then how do we find that angle again we can use the inclination of line fb right so again we're saying that turn off theta is equals to uh, the gradient of a line we are interested in fb now so we're gonna have turn of that angle being equals to minus a half because that is the gradient of that line so now that angle will be equals to turn arc minus a half and that is equals to minus 29.5167 and you know if you get a negative angle you're supposed to add 180 and that will be equals to 150.4833 so this angle um cpb so cpb will be equals to 180 minus uh, 150 point four eight three three uh which will be equals to twenty nine point five one six seven right uh now we can move to angle pcb so let's look at pcb so pcb uh let me I like it in green also so pcb is here this is pcb pcb will be close to this 45 degrees here right vertically opposite angle so we're saying that uh, pcb is equals to 45 degrees so now we can find theta theta is equals to the sum of the two which is gonna be 45 degrees plus 29.5167 uh, and that is all equals to 
0.5167 degrees uh, now let's move forward and find the length of bf uh, that's 3.4.2 so we want to find the length of uh, bf right we know that the length will be given by x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared right again in this case we have to decide which point we take in as the second and which point we take in as the first so we want the length of uh, bf let me just erase some stuff here so you'll realize that we don't have the coordinates of f so let's find the coordinates of f first so that we can find the length of bf so the coordinates of f uh, we know the x coordinate of f because it's a y intercept we can substitute uh, that we can substitute zero into the equation and find the y coordinate right so we're gonna have uh, y of f is equals to half of zero plus two so half of zero is zero plus two that is just two so now we have deduced that the coordinates of f is zero for the x and two for the y so let's take uh, point f as our second point and b as our first point right so here we're gonna have zero minus x of b which is eight squared plus uh, y2 that will be two uh, minus minus two that will be plus four right squared and then if you put that in your calculator you're gonna get four uh, square root of five and then now we can move to 3.4.3 let's look at 3.4.3 it's saying we must find the area of a b f so let me just uh, highlight a b f so we have a b f a b f so we have our triangle a b f here right uh what is the formula for the area of a triangle uh the area of a triangle is given by a half side one multiplied by side two and then sine of the angle which angle the angle which the two sides send which right on a right angle the triangle the two sides that you will usually use will be sandwiched in 90 degrees so that's why it's usually written as just half base times height but that is not always the case you can choose to use the other sides as long as you will take sine of the angle the sides sandwich right so here for this question i'm going to take side a b and side f b right so if i take those two sides the angle they'll be sandwiching is theta right i already have theta i already have f b i just need to find a b and then i will have the area of my triangle so now um fb we know fully well that fb is equal to 4 square root of 5 now let's find ab right so ab will be equals to uh, y2 minus y1 squared plus x2 minus x1 so let's take b as our second point right so y of b uh, that is minus 2 minus y of a that will be minus minus six so we're just gonna have plus six here squared plus uh x of b that is eight minus x of a that is four squared and then uh, the length of a b is four square root of q so now we can say that the area of our triangle a b f will be equals to half uh, side one uh four square root of five right four square root of five multiplied by the other side four square root of two sine of the angle the sandwich right the sandwich theta and we just did use that the angle for theta is 71.5167 so we have sine of 71.5167 so when i do that i get 22 point eight units uh, squared right because it's an area and then let's move forward and do 3.5 3.5 says uh, let g be a point in the fourth quadrant such that a p b g is a parallelogram calculate the size of angle p a g so we are interested in angle p a p a g 
if we have coordinate g on the fourth quadrant such that a p b g is a parallelogram so let's go see how we can possibly do that so we have a p b and we need g such that a p b g is a parallelogram right so if g is somewhere here then we get our parallelogram so we are looking for p a g so p a g p a g is somewhere here right and then p a g is made up of b a g which is this angle here and p a c or p a b which is um the angle here right so if we break uh, that angle into two we can find it using b a g and p a c so let's pay our attention to b a g first so angle b a g so we are looking at uh, b a g this angle here this angle here that's what we're interested for now we're looking at b a g so if you pay close attention you will realize that b a g is supposed to be equals to angle theta right why are we saying they're supposed to be equals to angle theta p a g b is now a parallelogram so those angles will be alternate angles so now we can see p a g is equals to theta uh, not only is it equals to theta it will be equals to 71.5167 degrees right so we have found angle b a g we can then look at angle p a c so let's have p a c here right so let me just uh, erase the information for angle uh, b a g so that we can pay our attention to p a c so p a c is this one that is left in green right now so p a c will be equals to 45 degrees why am i saying so let's look at triangle p a c right so let me just highlight triangle p a c so here's triangle PAC here. In triangle PAC, angle CPA, this angle here, is 90 degrees, right? And then we already know that this angle here is 45 because it's vertically opposite to this angle here that is 45. So we have 90 degrees, we have 45 degrees. We know that the angle should add up to 180 then angle PAC should be equal to 45 degrees and angle PAC is indeed 45 degrees. So now we can see that angle PAG is 45 degrees plus 71.5167. That will be equal to 116.5167. This is an introductory video on analytical geometry. I cherry pick this question because uh, it has a lot of questions, um, theorems, and formulas of which I want to cover today. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'm going to start by reading the problem statement. It says um, in the diagram, KLN are vertices of triangle KLN of which you can see on the left hand side right um and then we have angle lkn of angle 78.69 degrees uh which is intersecting with the x-axis at p so angle p is the angle of inclination of line kl right and then kl is produced um there we can see it uh the inclination of kn is theta and then we have a point M on the third quadrant. Um, here is, I just put it in a box right there because uh, it's not really visible. And then the first question says, calculate the gradient of KN. Okay, so we have 3.1, 3.1.1. It says, uh, calculate the gradient of KN. Um, gradient is denoted by small letter M and then the two letters are the letters of the points of which the line is joining. So because this is an introductory video, I'm going to define every formula before I use it uh, so that you can understand what is going on. So gradient by definition um, is the change 
in y divided by the change in x right so what is change change is when you have uh, some final point and you have some initial point right uh, there we have it x final minus um, x initial uh, but then that's more of a physics way of looking at it uh, in math we just say uh, y2 for y final and y1 for y initial and then for x uh, the corresponding numbers just like you can see what i wrote there so if we have some line a b so this is uh, the gradient of a b uh, let me put a sketch let's say this is point a and then this is point b and we have a line joining the two right and then let's say b is made out of um, 8 and 12 and then a is made out of uh, 4 and c is uh, this is the x coordinate this is the y this is the x this is the y so when you want to calculate the gradient you have to choose which point uh, you're regarding as the first and then you choose which point you're gonna regard as the second um, you get the same answer uh, doing it in both ways so you can say point b is the second point so this is b this will be y2 this will be x1 uh, uh x2 i meant uh, x1 and y1 so to solve the problem we have in hand uh we have point k point k it has coordinates minus one and two and then point n it has coordinates one and minus one so we can choose uh, each point between these two to be the first and the second so let's say um, m of kn equals to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 uh, let's say point n is the second point right so if we say point n is the second point then this will be x2 and then this will be y2 so y2 in this instance uh, it will be uh, y2 it will be minus 1 uh, minus y1 y1 will be the y coordinate of point k right so minus 2 divided by x2 which is 1 uh, minus minus 1 the x coordinate of point k this is going to give us minus 3 uh, divided by 2 uh, using point n at the second point uh, but for uh, to, to prove what you're talking about when you say it doesn't matter the order of the point let's do it the other way around uh, so the gradient of kn if you take point k as the second point y2 will be 2 and then y1 will be minus 1 so minus minus 1 and then we divide by x2 uh, will be minus 1 and x1 will be uh, 1 so that will be minus 1 this gives you 3 divided by minus 2 so the order of the point doesn't matter we're gonna still get the same gradient so if you have a line and then the points are given the best way to find the gradient is just by um, using this formula we have here uh, it's the best way if you are given uh, the points of the line but then sometimes you are not given uh, the the points maybe you are given one point or you are given something else so this formula might not always work um, maybe we will find a problem as we are going uh, to demonstrate uh, this idea uh, that I'm talking about so let's move forward we have 3.1.2 it says that um, show that the gradient uh, oh no it says that the size of oh calculate the size of theta the inclination of key n uh, so if you look on the left hand side 
uh, this is the theta uh, we have here right um so the inclination what is inclination by definition i feel like that's an important uh that's an important point of which you have to start from the inclination is um the angle between the x-axis and the line so for line kn the inclination is theta as you see there but then if you look at the left hand side we have the line kl the inclination so we're starting from the x-axis and then we're moving and then there we hit how uh, we hit line K, kl right so that's the inclination of line kl um and then yeah for the y <laughs> for the y axis uh if you pay at close attention if you start from the x axis and we go into the y uh it's an angle of 90 right so the inclination of the y axis is 90 degrees um so to say so the equation says let's calculate uh the size of theta the inclination of um of kn uh, there's a formula we use for this uh, the formula we use is that um, tan theta equals to the gradient of uh, kn um, another point that you'll mention in this kind of questions usually the first question what you calculate on the first question will help you answer the second question and so forth so most of the time if you're solving the second question and you didn't use anything from the first question um you're probably getting lost or it's a special case uh, but then let's carry on uh this is the formula for uh, the angle of inclination like i was saying and then on the left hand side i've made it clear what we mean by the angle of the inclination the angle between the x-axis and the line of uh, interest so let's go ahead and solve it so we're going to have tan of theta theta we, of which is what we are interested in the angle of inclination and then it's equals to the gradient of kn we've already say we've already calculated the gradient of kn and it is minus three divided by two uh, now it's just a matter of um it's just a matter of taking tan to the other side uh, of which we do it in the name of uh, tan uh, arc or tan inverse of minus um, 3 over 2 if you put that in your calculator you'll get um, minus 56,3099 right uh, so every time when you calculate in uh, the angle of inclination and you get a negative value you're supposed to add 180 degrees right uh, that's that's always uh, there's something profound of which i think you should you know pause the video and write it down so that you don't forget it uh, but then if i go ahead and do that we're gonna have plus 180 there uh, which will give us uh let me see that will give us uh 123 comma 69 uh, degrees so that's the angle of uh, inclination of um, line k n um, if we add uh, the coordinates of point l at the you know uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, calculate the inclination of you know that line just to demonstrate the idea but nevertheless uh, let us carry on uh, we have 3.2 oh, of which it says show that the gradient of kl is equal to one um let's look at kl uh we have kl there uh i've already you know i uh, put uh, arbitrary coordinates to calculate um the the inclination of line kn uh, we use the formula uh tan theta equals to the gradient of uh, the point of interest let's just say a b right so because i used that formula there and then i found the angle to be 123.69 degrees and i've been preaching all this time that uh, the question above uh, usually answers the question that follows
So I'm I'm just gonna look at that angle and look at that formula and try find a way of which I can calculate um, the the gradient of KL right uh, or something along those lines. So for KL, I don't have uh, this angle theta here. Uh, that's I don't have uh, the gradient. I want both of them. Uh, but then if I get the angle theta, I can find the gradient. So let me see if that can be possible. Uh, the angle of inclination of line KL is there around uh, point P. Uh, let me just color it in blue so that you can see it. Uh, that's the angle there. Uh, if we manage to uh, calculate that angle, we can then calculate uh, the gradient of KL. Uh, but then how can we calculate uh, that angle? That angle is an angle in triangle KP and the point of intersection between the x axis and the KN. Um, and then there's an exterior angle uh, right there, uh, theta, the inclination of KN. Um, but you, if, if you pay close attention, you'll realize that that angle theta, uh, which is uh, outside of a uh, triangle KP and the intersection between KN and X and the X axis. Uh, this is the intersection. Let me use a, a different color. Uh, this is the intersection I'm talking about. Yeah, uh, this is the triangle. Uh, this angle Q is an exterior angle to this triangle. So it is equal to K plus this angle you are interested in. So if we write that down, we get theta equals to angle K uh, plus angle K P and a KPO. Yeah, that's also correct. So this angle theta is one, two, three, comma six nine, like we said. Angle K is seventy eight comma six nine uh, plus angle KPO. That's what we are interested in. KPO. Uh, so this implies that KPO uh, is equals to one twenty three comma six nine minus 78,69 uh, which will give you uh, let me plug it in the calculator real quick um, 123,69 minus 78,69 uh, this is uh, 45 degrees right so now we have uh, now we have our our angle theta uh, the only unknown is the gradient of which uh, is what we're interested in. So let's go ahead and calculate that. Uh, we're going to get uh, tan theta equals to uh, the gradient of um, KL uh, theta um, is 45 degrees uh, equals to the gradient of KL. So tan uh, 45 is just 1. So the gradient of KL is indeed one. Uh, let's move ahead. 3.3 uh, 3 says determine the equation of the straight line KL in the form y equals to mx plus c. Uh, so let's write y equals to mx plus c. Uh, above we just calculated m. So if we substitute it into the equation, we're going to get y equals to uh, just x because m is 1 uh, plus c. So um, now we have three unknown variables, um, y, x, and c. Uh, but the trick here is that if you take any point on line KL, that point will give you an x value and a y value. And then after that, you'll be able to calculate C, which is the intercept of the graph. Uh, if we take point K, point K is made out of coordinates minus 1 and 2, of which this is the X and then this is the Y. If you substitute it in the equation, you're going to get 
uh, 2 equals to uh, minus 1 for x plus c. You subtract minus 1, you add minus 1 to both sides, uh, you get 3 equals to c, right? Uh, so now the our equation uh, will therefore be y equals to x uh, plus 3. Uh, to prove that this formula works and we didn't do anything wrong, we're going to substitute the x value of k <coughs> and see if we're going to get uh, the corresponding y value. If you do that, you're going to get um, y equals to minus 1 plus 3, which gives you 2. <coughs> so as far as we're concerned, uh, the equation uh, that uh, we determined for line KL is quite right, right? Uh, so that's how you calculate uh, the equation of the line if you have a gradient and uh, another point on the line. Um, there's an other ways of calculating the equation of a line if you have other information. I'm gonna give it to y'all at the end of the video, so make sure you watch until the end. Um, let's move ahead. Uh, 3.40, 3.40, uh, it says, uh, calculate uh, the length of Kn. Uh, so, length of Kn, let's take a look at Kn. Uh, let me highlight it there on the left hand side. Uh, this is Kn, right? So, first and foremost, we'll go back to the definition and we'll define what we mean by distance. So, we have some point A here, and then here we have some point B. Uh, let's see, it's made out of A, B, and then point B is made out of C, D. And then the question says, uh, calculate the distance between the two points. Uh, the same way we did when we were finding the gradient, we're going to choose which point to take as the second point and which point to take as um, the first point. So if we take point B E as the second point, then the length of uh, line AB uh, will be given by uh, the square root of uh, C E uh, minus A squared uh, plus uh, D E minus B E squared. Uh, so in a way, uh, what we're just saying is that um, we have y2 minus y1 squared uh, plus x2 minus x1 uh, squared. Uh, this is the uh, the formula for the length of a line. So you're just gonna choose which point you take in at the same point as the second point, and which point you take in as the first point, and um, you just uh, do what we've been preaching. Um, so the question in hand is the length of Kn. Uh, so let's take K as the second point. So this will be uh, x2, y2. We take n as the second point. Uh, so this will be x1, and then this will be y1. Uh, let's substitute it into our equation. Uh, we're gonna get Kn uh, equals to the square root of um y2 uh that's 2 uh, minus y1 it's minus 1 so this is just gonna be plus 1 uh, we square it plus x2 that is minus 1 uh x1 is just 1 so that will be minus 1 also um if we do that we're gonna get and uh, 3 squared that will be 90 and then this will be minus 2 to the 2, uh, it will just give us 4. So at the end, we're going to be left with square root of uh, 13. Um, so that's how you calculate uh, the length of key n. It's a really um, straightforward question. Uh, no trick, uh, no complications, no nothing. Uh, if, this, if you get a question like this on the exam, uh, don't expect anything less. Um, let's move ahead and look at the following question, uh, 3.5, 3.5.1, 3.5.1, it's 
it has five marks uh, a lot of people when they see a question that has five marks uh, they run away as fast as they can uh, but really uh, they're usually not that difficult so it says calculate oh okay first of all uh, they're saying that uh, kn uh, it is equals to lm uh, those are the lengths I assume and then it says calculate the possible coordinates of L uh, if you look at the left hand side we have L at the on the third quadrant uh, so uh, it says calculate the possible coordinates of L okay so what I'm going to do I'm going to join a uh, line I'm just I'm going to join LM point LM to form the line LM right which uh, they are saying is equals to the line LN so if I do that oh okay let me use a slimmer um, way of writing so there is LM uh, is equals to line uh, KN right these two are equal in right so basically what they're saying is that um, um KL equals to uh, lm right so this is equals to uh square root of 30 and then they're saying at uh, the possible coordinates of l right so l is what you're looking for uh, let's say this is a and let's say this is b um so if we use uh, the the, the distance formula here uh, we already have the distance we're gonna have um, an unknown for x and y uh, for this point L um, let's just do that and we'll take it from there so uh, for point LM uh, L, okay let me write M here and say the x is uh, minus 3 and the y is uh, minus 5 uh, okay let's take um, L as the first point as the second point so here we have x2 y2 here we have x1 uh, y1 right so the length of point uh, lm it will be lm equals to the square root of um, x2 is a uh, uh, minus minus 5 right so this will just be uh, plus 5 squared plus b uh, minus minus 3 this will just be plus 3 uh, squared uh, we already know that this is equals to square root of 30 uh, because lm is equals to kn um so so because we have uh, the equation uh, for point uh for for line kl right in place of the y coordinate of l we're going to put the equation of uh, that line uh, so uh, instead of a we're going to have uh, x uh, plus 3 right uh, because we calculated uh, we, we determined that the equation of kl is x plus 3 then we're gonna have that plus 5 then and then we're gonna square and then for b we're just gonna have x uh, plus 3 squared um, so let's go ahead and try simplify that um, that will be uh, x uh, plus 8 squared uh, plus x plus 3 squared um, this might seem a bit complicated uh, I'm sure you went hold on what's going on here uh, so this kind of questions um, it's it's not that tricky uh, it needs you to have skin in the game if you do enough if you do an enough number of questions uh, there won't be any question you don't know how to solve right uh, so this is just one of those questions that if you bump into it in the examination and you've never seen it before it's probably gonna throw you off and you won't be able to you know to answer it unless you're like an Elon Musk or something uh, but then anyway uh, that's how we do it uh, in place of the y you put the equation of uh, the line at that point um, and then for in place of the x you just put the x and then uh, you, you take it from there you solve for x so to say so let's move ahead we have square root of 13 there which is equals to um, let me you know solve this 
uh, x plus 8 squared uh, the way you do it is like you say x times x that will be x squared and then you say x times 8 multiplied by 2 and uh, that is 16x and then you say 8 multiplied by 8 that is 64 and then you do the same thing here yeah, x by x x x squared uh, x by 3 is 3x you multiply by that by 2 is plus 6x and then nine, <laughs> 3 multiplied by 3 is just 9 so here we have square root of 13 uh, which is equals to um, let's solve that which is inside the bracket we're gonna have x squared uh, we have 16x uh, plus oh no 2x squared I'm sorry uh, so we have 2x squared we have 16x plus 6x uh, which will give us 22x and then 64 plus 9 uh, will give us uh, 73 uh, we square both sides to get rid of the uh, roots yeah and then here we'll get 13 uh, equals to 2x squared plus 22x uh, plus 73 uh, you take uh, 13 to the other side uh, we're gonna have 2x squared plus 22x uh, plus um, 60 equals to uh, 0 um, obviously there's a common factor here so if we say x squared uh, plus 11x uh, plus 30 uh, it's actually oh, I'm so sorry for that um, there we go equals to 0 it's way much better we're gonna have um, x plus 6 um, x plus 5 uh, equals to 11 if you add 6 plus 5 it gives you the middle term if you multiply them it gives you the third term so x at that point can be minus 6 or x at that point can be uh, minus 5 um, if it's minus 6 then what's the y we know that y is x plus 3 right so here it will be uh, minus 6 plus 3 uh, which will be uh, minus 3 um, here we're gonna have uh, y which is x plus 3 uh, is gonna be either minus 5 uh, gonna be minus 5 plus 3 <coughs> which is close to uh, minus 2 so the possible uh, coordinates of L is uh, minus 6 and minus 3 or L uh, minus uh, 5 or N minus 2. Yeah, so that's how you solve that. Uh, it's a mouthful. Um, I suggest, you know, you take it back and uh, you see me do it all over again because yeah, it's quite, it's quite lengthy, it's quite tiring, uh, it's quite demanding. So I had to cut the video uh, because of some technical issues, uh, but let's carry on. Um, 3.5.2, it says that um, determine uh, the coordinates of L if it is given that KLMN is a parallelogram, right? so the first thing i'm gonna do i'm gonna uh, join l and m uh, let me just uh, go ahead and do that so this l and m joined and then i'm gonna join m and n right uh m and n and then uh, there's a line there joining l and n and let me complement it by joining um k and k and m uh line l and n and line k and m the intersect uh there i put the point uh let's say this point uh, is q right um because now we've deduced that uh, k l m n is a parallelogram uh, it is given to us that means that a uh, point Q is the midpoint of line KM and is the midpoint of line LN. That's because it's a parallelogram. That's a property. So every time when you have a question like this, uh, you are given a parallelogram and then you have uh, three uh, coordinates on the vertices of the parallelogram and then you have one missing. 
what you do is you determine uh, the coordinates of the midpoint uh, between uh, the two lines of which you have the coordinates for and then you use that midpoint to determine uh, the coordinates of the point you're looking for so in this instance we're going to find the midpoint of a uh, line km right and then after uh, doing that uh, we're gonna use the coordinates of q to find the coordinates of l so if you have a line km and you agree uh, that um, the midpoint of that line is q the coordinates of q uh, become um let's say uh, this is x of q and then this is y of q uh, this then becomes um x of k uh, plus x of m uh, divided by q uh, and then for y you get y of k plus y of m uh, divided by 2 uh, this is the formula when you uh, calculating uh, the midpoint of uh, the midpoint between you know two points uh, on a line so you're gonna add uh, the x values uh, the x coordinates you divide by 2 then that will be the x value of the midpoint you then add the y coordinates and you divide them by 2 and that will be the corresponding y value of the midpoint um so <laughs> let me just go ahead and do that so x of k is uh, minus one and then we add in three uh which is we add in minus three so that's just gonna be minus three uh we divide by two uh y of k uh, is two and then we add in minus five uh so that's just gonna be minus five and then we divide by two so minus one uh, minus three uh that's uh minus four um divided by two and then two minus five that's just uh minus three divided by two uh if we simplify the x we get uh, minus two and then the other point is minus three uh divided by two so this is uh the midpoint of a uh, line km but then the midpoint of line km uh, which we're calling q in this instance it is also the midpoint of line L M L N L N. So if you uh, use this formula and then you use uh, uh, point L, uh, let's say L has coordinate uh, A and B, right? You will then be able to solve for uh, A on L and then uh, B on L. So you know that's what we're going to do. So let's just uh, go ahead and do that. So. Uh, x of q um now we're using l and n right and it's one and then minus one uh equals to uh x of l uh, plus uh y of uh, no plus x of n uh, divided by two so x of q we've already determined it it is minus two right uh, which is close to x of l uh, then that will just be a we're saying l is made up of a and b and then x of n uh, we just add in one we divide by two uh we're gonna cross multiply that will give us a uh, minus four uh, equals to a plus one uh therefore you can see here that a equals to uh minus five we take in uh one to the other side so for y of q uh, we get uh, y of l plus y of n uh, divided by divided by 2 y of q is minus 3 divided by 2 which is equals to y of l uh, y of l is b that's what we're interested in and then y of n it's minus 1 right and then we divide by 2 if we cross multiply we get minus cgc equals to um 2b uh, minus 2 uh minus 2 yeah we take 2 to the other side we get uh minus 4 because it's gonna be plus 2 and then this is equals to 2b right 
uh, you can see here that uh, b equals to minus 2. Uh, so the coordinates of point L uh, will then change from a and b to uh, minus 5 and minus 2. Right, so that's um, the coordinates of L using uh, the midpoint of K and M. Um, let, let, let's move ahead. Uh, last but not least, uh, three points is in. Uh, three points is says T is a point on KL produced. Okay, uh, TM is drawn such that uh, tm equals to lm um so okay let's just let's just say that uh and let's just say that this is point t right uh, it seems like point t actually we know point t it's on this line is it that t is here or t is here i uh, want between the two but then uh, the point we're getting to is that uh when you i uh, join it to tm and uh, this line will be equals to this line will be equals to this line um and then uh, it goes on to say i uh, can create the area of k t n oh, okay area of triangle k t n uh, so let's sort of highlight uh, triangle k t n on our diagram so that uh, we can see what we're dealing with um uh, here's k on the second quadrant uh, let me change the color um okay let's just go with this one um so okay where's my ruler um okay a lot of technical issues uh k k k t n so k uh, let's join it with t um let me go ahead and do that yeah so there we have it and then ktn uh, let's join t and n um so that we can have our triangle there uh we have a triangle and then voila tm uh, is equals to lm uh, but in 3.5 it will say that lm equals to kn right uh, we calculated the length of kn and we found it to be uh, 13 uh, square root of 13 right um, for for line lm to give us square root of 13 uh, a point on line k k l uh, so to say it was either it was gonna be uh, minus 5 uh, point and then for x and uh, minus two for y and then the other point possible point could only be minus six and minus three right and then if uh, we are given that uh, the diagram um, kl mn is a parallelogram then this is the point of and uh, this is the point for and uh, this is the coordinates of l right so the only possible coordinate for t such that uh, the length of tm is square root of 13 is minus 6 and minus 3 right that's the only way a uh, line uh, tm can be lm lm which is kn and kn which is square root of 13. so or whatever we're doing here we uh, assuming that this is the coordinates of t and that uh, tm is square root of um uh, yeah tm is square root of 13. uh so we have uh, the length of kn um we have coordinates of okay length of kn is given uh, we have determined it we have coordinates of t so what we can do is calculate uh, the length of kt uh, if you calculate the length of kt and then we have the length of kn and uh, kn and kt uh, sandwich uh, an angle which is 78,69 uh, we can therefore use that to calculate the area of a triangle right 
uh, because you can calculate the area of a triangle uh, as a half a side one a side two and then you have a sine of the angle between the sides so if we calculate tk and then we have kn and then we have the angle in between we're going to be able to find uh, the area of the triangle so let's go ahead and calculate uh, the length of kt so we have kt uh, equals to uh, there we go the square root of uh, let's check k as the second part so we're gonna have y2 which is 2 uh, minus y1 uh, this is our kt here don't forget so y1 will be um, uh, minus 3 so this is just gonna be plus 3 uh, we squared and then uh, plus um, x x2 is minus 1 and then we subtract x1 so it's just gonna be plus cg squared and then uh, let's solve this uh, 2 plus 3 5 is squared uh, it's 25 uh, minus 1 plus cgc that's 5 and then we squared uh, so it's 25 again and then kt is therefore um, square root of 15 right uh, so uh, and then we have the angle in between so now we what's left is just to substitute it in the formula so the area of triangle ktn equals to half um, half a kt uh, multiplied by a kn and then the angle sine the angle of which uh, they send which right so a sine of a uh, t k uh, n uh, if you substitute you get equals to 1 over 2 uh, kt is square root of 50 uh, we just determined it and then kn uh, square root of 30 we already know and then sine of uh, 70 80 comma 69 uh, let me put that into the calculator um, we get um, we get twarafu uh, comma uh, five zero uh, uh, some units uh, squared uh, right and then uh, that brings us to the end of the video 4.1 says uh, the equation of the circle centered at s yes s on the diagram is x plus 8 squared plus y squared is equals to 4 4.1.1 write down the coordinates of s right so 4.1.1 we know that the general formula for the equation of a circle is given as x minus a squared plus y minus b squared is equals to r squared and then the point at the center of the circle will be given by a and b so for our circle centered at s the coordinates of s will be given by minus 8 and 0 it just says y squared right so that will just give us 0 and then this 8 will give us minus 8 based on this general formula we have right and then let's do 4.1.2 4.1.2 says show that the diameter of the circle centered at s is four units so what is the diameter by definition the diameter is equals to two multiplied by the radius right but what is the radius of our circle we know that from the general formula uh, x minus a squared plus y minus b squared shall be equals to r squared and we're given r squared so with r squared we can find r and ultimately find uh, the diameter right so r squared is equals to 4 here it is right here right so we say in uh, r will be equals to 2 we take square root on both sides right so d the diameter will be equals to 2 multiplied by r which is 2 and this is always close to 4 so the diameter 
is equals to four units and that's exactly what we are asked to show now let's move to 4.2 4.2 says that if it is further given that sr is equals to eight units right so sr is equals to eight units problem solving 101 you have to write down the given information right and then r has coordinates uh, minus 8 divided by 5 and 24 divided by 5 yes r here and then 4.2.1 says let's find the length of em so let's denote em on our sketch so here's em uh, the radius of our big circle right uh, so what information do we have we know that sr is equals to eight units uh, we also know that the radius of the small circle is two units right so we can say se is equals to two units right uh, se uh, is this distance here we're saying it's two units and then sr uh, this entire distance is eight units so we can basically find uh, the length of er right and er will be the diameter which is uh, two multiplied by the radius and em is our radius right what am i saying what am i saying i'm saying that sr right and the entire distance from s to r will be equals to se the radius of the small circle plus er right but then you can see that er is the diameter right so it will be equals to 2 multiplied by the radius of the small circle which is 2 multiplied by em what we are asked to find so in place of sr we can put 8 units in place of sc that's 2 units and then in place of er that's 2 multiplied by em so you can see now that em will be equals to 8 minus minus 2 divided by 2 right so 8 minus 2 uh, that is 6 and then 6 divided by 2 uh, that is 3 so em is 3 units right and now we can do 4.2.2 4.2.2 says let's find the gradient of tangent fe right uh, fe is the tangent of both our small circle and our big circle right so we know fully well that uh, the radius and the tangent are perpendicular to each other right the product of their gradients will give you minus one so if we find the gradient of er or the gradient of se then we're going to be able to find uh, the gradient of tangent fe right so let's find uh, the gradient of se since we have coordinates s right but wait a minute we don't have the coordinates of e so how are we still going to find uh, the gradient of se the gradient of se will also be equals to the gradient of sr because it's because it is one straight line from s to e to m to r right so the gradient on that line is the same so we can just use sr to find the gradient of se so that will be equals to y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1 by definition so let's take uh, r as our second coordinate right we have the coordinates of r here so y2 will be 24 divided by 5 and then y1 will be zero right because s uh, rests on the x-axis so zero uh, divided by uh, x2 minus 8 divided by 5 minus um, x1 of s right uh, we know that that is supposed to be minus 8 so it will be basically plus 8 right and then uh, when you compute that uh, you get 3 divided by 4 right uh, but we know that uh, m of se multiplied by the gradient of the tangent should give you minus 1 by definition so the gradient of the tangent will be equal to minus 1 divided by 3 uh, divided by 4 so that will be equals to minus 1 multiplied by 4 divided by 3 that is minus 4 divided by 3 so the gradient of the tangent is minus 4 divided by 3 
and now we can do 4.2.3 4.2.3 says let's find the coordinates of m the coordinates of m so m is the center of the big cycle right uh, what do we know up to this point what do we know about up to this point we know the radius of the big cycle is three units right and then we know the radius of the small circle um, it is two units and then we know the coordinates of s um, and then we know the coordinates of r uh, that's all we know right and we sort of know the x value uh, the y value of our coordinate uh, p right so we have to find the coordinates of m using this information that we have so how can we possibly do that so m and p they share the same x value right uh, that is because if the x-axis touches the circle then where it touches the circle will be the x value of the center of the circle and then if it touches it along the y with the y-axis and then the y value will be the y of the circle right so m and p they share the same uh, x value so if we can find the x value of p we have the x value of m right and now we can see that uh, sm squared uh, is equal to sp squared plus mp squared so what is sm sm is se plus em right so that is 2 plus 3 so we have 5 squared being equal to sp we don't have sp but that's what we're looking for right so that we can find uh, the x value of p right and then plus mp squared mp squared is em squared because they're all radiuses right from m to e that's the radius from m to p that's the radius so we have uh, the radius is three so we have three squared right so sp squared is basically five squared minus three squared right from so sp will be close to five squared that's 25 three squared is nine so 25 minus 9 is 16 square root of 16 is 4 right so sp is equals to 4 but we know that the coordinates of s is minus 8 and 0 right and then we have p which is the x value and uh, 0 here right but we know that from s to p is 4 units right so what can be the possible value x value of p here it should be clear that the only possible value of p such that sp is equals to 4 should be minus 4 right the descent from s to p will be 4 if the x value of p is 4 so now we have found the x value of our coordinate m it's minus 4 and some y which we do not know let's go back to our sketch again if you pay more attention you will realize that from p to m is three units right because uh, that is the radius is three units uh, we already know fully well that uh, the y value of p is zero right so if from p to m is three units then the y coordinate of m should be three so the coordinates of m will be minus four and three right and now we can move to 4.3.4 so we have 4.3.4 which says uh, we shall find the coordinates of e so let's just erase some of this stuff so yes e here and we are interested in the coordinates of e now we have the coordinates of m and we have the coordinates of r it should be obvious now that we're gonna use the midpoint theorem right we're gonna use m as a bait basically to find the coordinates of e because we know that x of m since it is the midpoint of er right why are we saying it's the midpoint of er because from e to m is the same distance as m to r and they're on the same solid line so m is the midpoint of er so we can say x of m is x of e plus x of r 
divided by 2. Uh, but we know x of m fully well. That is minus 4, right? So we have minus 4 being x of e plus x of r. x of r is minus 8 divided by 5, right? And then everything divided by 2. You cross multiply, you get minus 8 is equals to x of e uh, minus 8 divided by 5. So minus 8 plus 8 divided by 5 is equals to x of e and then if you put that on your machine you will get an x of e which is equals to uh, minus 32 divided by 5 so we have x of e being equals to minus 32 divided by 5 now we can move our attention to uh, y of e uh, we are applying the same idea we see that y of m will be equals to y of e plus y of r divided by 2. Uh, y of m, uh, that is 3, right? We have already established that. Then y of e plus y of r, which is 24 divided by 5, everything divided by 2. And then now we can cross multiply. You get 6 is equals to y of e plus 25 or 24 divided by 5, right? Uh, so we have 6 minus 24 divided by 5 is equals to y of e, right? So what is y of e? y of e will be, if you compute that, you get 6 divided by 5, which makes total sense, right? It's just slightly above 1 because uh, 6 minus 24 divided by 5 should be 1 point something. So now we have e having coordinates um minus 32 divided by 5 and 6 divided by 5 and there we go let's do 4.3 4.3 says um the circle centered at m right circle centered at m so we have m uh, being minus 4 and 3 and then now on 4.3 they given you the coordinates of m yeah so it shifted one unit to the left so let's shift m one unit to the left right so it was at minus 4 which shifted one unit to the left it will be at minus 5 right and reflected on the x-axis to form a new cycle centered at k so it is reflected in the x-axis so when we reflect in the x-axis let's say we had a point a right of coordinates x and y when you reflect on the x-axis you get a x and then minus y so when you reflect on the axis you just have to put minus on the y value so we have minus three here right uh, let's erase this so there we go we have our uh, new center of the cycle, right? Uh, the question is asking us determine whether point whether the point uh, minus eight and zero lies inside or outside uh, the cycle center at k. Show all calculations. So we have shifted the circle, right? We haven't changed the radius and everything. So the radius of our circle is still equals to three right so when we calculate let's name this point um l when we calculate the distance of ml right m is our new center right if it is greater than three then it makes sense to conclude that uh, the point l of minus eight and zero lies outside of the circle because the radius of our circle is three and then if it is less than three then that point will lie inside the circle and then if it is exactly three then it lies on the circumference of the circle so let's go ahead and compute ml so we see that ml will be equals to we know the distance formula uh, y2 minus y1 squared plus x2 minus x1 squared so let's just go ahead and sub it in so we're gonna get uh, y2 let's take l as our second point so that will be zero uh, minus minus three so that will be plus three squared plus 
minus 8 minus minus 5 so that will be plus 5 squared right so we basically have uh, 3 squared which is 9 and then minus 8 plus 5 that is minus 3 so we have 9 plus 9 so we have uh, the square root of 18 is the same as 3 multiplied by the square root of 2. So 3 multiplied by the square root of 2 is definitely greater than 3, right? So that point lies outside of the circle. So the point is outside the circle.